For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee, that questions for Carl. Yeah, okay, no, fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's, yeah, that's broad well, to anything, animal, well, no, animal, any creature. Well, no, animal, insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just thinking about, yeah. there's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um, I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because... Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through walls and stuff. Well, if you get an old one, if you get like an old one, that's about. Yeah. Most of them something. have lived in a box in a garden for fifty-two years. No, you, but you, but you get some that have been about, and even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some what, of them have. Well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two. Yeah. And I'll what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought... No, it's just that it's never as good, is it? It's like a place you go on holiday. And you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in... Going back to places. What do, what, what do you understand the question as? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back? You are that child again. You're in the body. You are the child. Or you've got your adult um, head and experiences. Well, on, you know, you, you Rick, can... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be did. honest. But now that you've flagged I him up, I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too big for the chairs. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay. Well, let's... choose an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. Know. I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever. But then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff. Because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, isn't it, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book, is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What, what about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could, you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like, uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does, the ghost of Christmas past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you what. question. It, this is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah. I nearly died once, didn't I? On a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <coughs> and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch them. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? 
Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were they gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, something well, unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, safety's one good moment when I was about six that I loved. Mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make it up. You could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant workers in South China are wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey. Three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go. Pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? They just aren't on the, the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh, I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that, but um, I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants like that, a pair of nappies and that. And I used to have to, uh, even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, because you'd fall in, um, my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that, like a like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go there, and uh, I'd do <laughs> my thing. And uh, you know, my mum used to say, "Oh, he's, he's going there. Don't look at him and that," because it put me off. You know, like cats don't like being watched when they do it. <laughs> when they go in their litter tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. Look, I tested it again. Why are you just like a little feral kid, just running around and going to the litter tray, covering it up, and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, nobody <laughs> likes being watched, and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that, and everyone's looking at you, it's. I don't. I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> Well, it has caught on. Has they're caught all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, <laughs> and 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 they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, what, what, what are we getting to? You know what I mean? What, what's going on in the world that this is happening? I know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't, I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards. Aren't we? <laughs> Why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. If you've got 125 million people, yeah, but not back. everybody wants to go at once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are like at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first. But this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented then? The Chinese just loads you... of stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well, loads they? of stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You seem quite educated on the subject, but. Um, they did them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was where you put mops on the feet of cats, was that right? Yeah. And they wander about the house, clean up and that, wash the floor for you, whilst you're pottering about. Um, <laughs> they've done, like, hats with umbrellas on them. They've done... They've done... I mean, they've, they've, they're known for, like, coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but, yeah, cats with mops is good as well. <laughs> Well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down, yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just annoyed of, about sort something? Of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? 
a homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a star rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? D gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, were, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that, so I said, oh, I've come to have a dance, and like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary, as there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? Do you get someone who isn't well? Do you go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do... They sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go no, on. No, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. Good. <laughs> That's what the programme's called. It ends the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, I feel ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is this great. This makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> what do you mean? Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that woo, word? Woo, woo, Who is woo. using that it word? Was, it was just W-E-W-E. -E. Let's call it a woo. Mm. 
An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. It's like a child in, like in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this, as a fish having two heads ain't going to solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, though, isn't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the telly only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever I'm sleep. Not sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. Don't know how you'd put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? What's <laughs> going as you said, it would get a bit boring, you know, your sleep is your rest, your time off, it, get, it, it, it helps you uh, detoxify, it helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh, Jim Pantry Dive. <laughs> okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> right, um, ages ago, right, about, about the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this gangster knocking about. And do you know how, like, was he called Hairy Fingers? Do you know, like, a lot of gangsters like to get into gambling and that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, all these, all these peers and that, all these, all these mates who are, like, gangsters and stuff, mm. they've all bought horses, right? Like, they tech, you know, tech racing and they make money from them and that, don't they? Yeah. Mm. So anyway, he and was Chuckles like... Chuckles the Seagull was no different. And, and he was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing to get into. I might, might get into a bit of that, right? So he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up. That's why he's sort of... It's he, a bit of a last minute. And the, and the jockey turns up and it's fine. He's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent. Okay, well, that was another so, podcast. So anyway... So um, please listen oh, hang next. Oh, there's more, there's more. Oh, hang on. So, oh. so anyway, so... Uh, this big race is coming up. It's yeah. like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because definitely. I can make a lot of money out of me also. Choose the jockey wisely, then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone oh, yeah. to sort it out and yeah. what have you so I can get in this race. So, Go to the jockey so club. His, his mate's people. like, yeah, all right, I'll have, a, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's, there's, there's always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. So anyway, right, so his mate says, look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey. Seems odd oh, because no, Ricky's just been saying... Oh, no, no. He's just been saying there's not a problem. What do you mean? So just because the main problem was Go on. a lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are I won't get paid. You know, he's a gangster. It's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse. I want it in the race. Saw it out. So they're like, no, oh, but boss, and he's like, 
Don't give me any of that. Exactly. They do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before... The big race, yeah. <laughs> left it to the last minute, okay, but yeah. fine. <laughs> and uh, he says, have you, have you got a jockey then? They're like, yeah, but... And he's going, don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but... And he's like, well, look... He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wants... Yeah, so, yeah, uh, like, yeah. he's saying, has he ridden their horses before and that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly... And he's like, like brilliant. And he goes, yeah, but mainly in like a in the In the jung... No, like in, in, the, in the circus and that, he'd <gasps> worked, he'd, he'd worked with horses and stuff. In the circus. It's fine. So he's like, that's, fine. that's enough, that's, that's all I need to know. Oh, they'd be too heavy, because circus so people so are quite built, aren't they? They're, they're he said, a bit so heavier than the jockey, because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, brilliant, get him down there and that, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand, he wasn't worried no about No point, not no, bothered, no. as far as he's concerned, he's, it's put all his, sorted. he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. Right? Sure. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves that, too was, short, legs too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore in the circus and that, because it's, it's, it's comfortable with that, yeah, he's yeah, happy yeah. with it, do you yeah, know what I mean? That's yeah, what he's exactly. happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse straight out of the trap and that, high speed, right? This, this jockey's got a really big grin on his face, he's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, who is this? Who's this jockey here? Yeah. It's amazing, never seen him before, and yet, look at him. But they can see his face, clearly. Anyway, Gangster's happy in that, because he's, he's won. Well, I just want to say, the crowd, the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can, I mean, it's, it's Yeah, but he's not... so fast and what have <laughs> the you. The blur, it's a blur, it's all a blur. He's really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off, and people were like, he's, he's gone, he's a goner. Right. He's got such a good reach that he managed to grab hold of the... Oh, reach. At the end of it, you know, like, the winner sort of rides around the crowd a bit, yeah. right? sort of, you know, show off and what have you. Yeah. And all the women are there, and you know, like, women are all dolled up at these events. Sure. Yeah. They've all got big, big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they've got fruit on those hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right. And um, one, oh one of the God. women, in one the of the women, oh particularly Carmen Miranda was very yeah, popular. Yeah. Yeah. One of the women had like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. right. some kind I'm, of Cuban. They're not, real, they're not real though. The hats, though. They're, 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 <laughs> it's not they're, real fruit, is it? Of yeah. course not. Never. So but I don't know who. Well, I thought they wore those sort of like, kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment even, shows. Even, I didn't realise they wore them. Yeah, at events. even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit, and it, it's sort of joke, but it, but it's it's fake fruit because it would it would it would perish. Well, this this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But what? why did the, why did the jockey? <laughs> so, you, why are you so desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. So anyway, so meanwhile the gangster's collecting his five hundred quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah. I don't understand. I still don't understand no, don't where understand. the jockey would go. Everyone from. noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Because I want to. It was it, it was nineteen fifties, and that's where the saying comes from. About do you know, like in Cockney slang, five hundred quid is a monkey. He he sort of put he, you know he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time. So when... So this happened in this in in, in England. In this country, yeah, yeah in, in England. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact. That well, would that's it. We that always you know there's no time length on this monkey news. If you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back. Or you know, if it's made ago, up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's so, bollocks, uh, send it in. If it's actually bollocks, please send it in. That's this week's monkey news.